Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Thursday, October 31st, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the football games here Thursday night. We got two of them, one in college football, one in the NFL. So happy Halloween and hopefully we get some winners for you. Let me know in the comments below what your picks are for tonight, for this weekend. All is welcome. Where you agree, where you disagree. Smash that like button if you're liking the content, guys, as we got... First game up, we'll talk the college football game first because it is kicking off first. We get uh, ESPN, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern. Jerry Richardson Stadium in North Carolina. That's Charlotte, North Carolina with the Charlotte 49ers hosting the Tulane Green Wave. It does look like Tulane now minus 14 in the hook as the road favorite, 55 and a half being the total charlotte comes in three and five straight up on the season they are two and two in aac conference play tulane six and two straight up and against the spread this green wave team has been making money for multiple seasons now they're four and oh in conference play and i bring up conference play because tulane is absolutely dominated playing conference opponents i mean this is a team that played Earlier in the season, they lost to Oklahoma and Kansas State. Those are their two losses so far, both of them two scores. The Kansas State game was within one score. And now they've won five straight games, 4-0 in conference, and their average win is by 27 points per game in conference. So they've absolutely dominated here. I know Willie Fritz is gone, but since he's left, uh, John Summerall, their new head coach, has come in and – under Willie Fritz, they had a great road record. I mean, Tulane is now r- running on a 13-1 and straight up, 12-2 and against the spread on the highway. So for whatever reason, this Green Wave team travels well outside of the, uh, the Big Easy here in New Orleans. And when you combine that road record with John Summerall himself, he came from Troy when Willie Fritz left. Uh, he coached Troy up for two years. He was the defensive coordinator um, for Kentucky. So, you know, he learned under uh, what stoops there in Lexington, got the Troy job and at Troy and he's carried it over here to Tulane 14 and two against the spread combined when on the road. So there's a lot of like road tendencies here pointing towards Tulane and playing good football. Now, looking at the Charlotte side of things, you know, they're, they're three and five on the season. Charlotte's kind of been a middling to to, to lower tier team in, in college football, FBS level here. What they're, I believe, in their 10th season as a Division One program. And they've played three different quarterbacks over the past month. I mean, all not doing the job, at least to like really secure the spot. They're pretty much 100s in all the important offensive categories, you know, yards per play, yards per game, things of that nature. And they've also struggled defensively in terms of stopping the running attack. And that's where I think the matchup on the field is. Like, I don't only like betting trends, Tulane on the road, things like that. I like to, you know, how is this matchup going to play on the field between these two squads? And Charlotte's really struggled against the defensive rushing attacks. And sure enough, Tulane is top 10 in the country in rushing yards. They're averaging over 215 yards per game. They run the ball 64% of the time. I I think Tulane's going to control this. I I know it's a tough spot uh, with their back-to-back travel on the road short week. They just went to uh, Denton, Texas. They beat North Texas 45-37, high-scoring game there. Um, I I don't know if they'll be able to put up 45 points in this contest, but I don't think Charlotte's going to be able to score a bunch on Tulane here. Also add on the fact the Green Wave defense, they lead the nation in non-offensive touchdowns, so they're very opportunistic in scoring the football. they got a lot of good playmakers on special teams and defense. So all that, guys, it opened 16 Pushed it down to 14 and a half. I know like a lot of people out there probably on the dog pushing that down. But I actually think at 14 in the hook, it's getting a little too low here, guys. I think Tulane wins this one maybe, I don't know, like 40 to 14, something like 40 to 17, something of that nature. So let's go Tulane over Charlotte to lead us off Thursday night Halloween. We get the NFL game up next. First, want to give the recap. Know you guys on to that in the comments. Um, I'm actually doing this before the Wednesday game, so I don't know how they're finishing. But the recap here, we did go one and two on Tuesday night. The one winner 
uh, was the Lafayette or Louisiana Lafayette region Cajuns winning outright as the dog, but still it's one and two minus 1.2 units on Tuesday. So that brings us to 43 and 30 Drew's daily diamond run over the last five weeks. That's 59% giving it out for free guys plus 9.8 units of profit. And that is on the minus 110 scale. You know, if we are do- doing a minus 130 or minus 140 in baseball, we are, com- we are counting that in the, uh, in, in the unit count, so plus 9.8 units and 59% there. So, uh, yeah, we're not just giving out big favorites and then claiming the percentage. So that, that is an important part. And a reminder, if you could comment below, it helps out the algorithm. Anything is welcome. Check out Premium Picks, wagertalk.com, experts page, Drew Martin. All right, last game up in the NFL, we get the Houston Texans and the New York Football Jets. 8-15 Eastern, Amazon Prime game. It is 42 in the hook as the total. It was Jets pick them. Now it's Jets minus one and a half as the home favorite here. And the Jets are just two and six straight up on the year and against the spread. So they've been burning some money. They've lost five straight um, against the spread and straight up. And they're up against the Texans who are sitting atop their division, six and two. They're four and four against the spread. The problem with betting the Texans in this one, yeah, it's a short week with travel. Although that's not the only situation. Their wide receiver room is really banged up. Diggs just last week went out for the year now. So they're without their top two receivers. Um, And when you look at the Houston Texans schedule, look at their last three wins or the last three games overall. The Indianapolis Colts, the Green Bay Packers, and the New England Patriots. That's Anthony Richardson, um, Malik Willis and Jacoby Brissett were the last three quarterbacks they faced. Now they're facing Aaron Rodgers. It's just a big kind of change here. And are they going to be able to have the success they had? Uh, we'll see. But the Jets have already played on a Thursday night game. They're one and zero, both against the spread and straight up. That was what week three over the New England Patriots, one of their biggest wins in terms of uh, margin of the whole season. So playing on a short week might help. The running back Hall, um, he struggled a little bit, so we'll see if he get he can get it going. But really, guys, the Jets last week they lost to the Patriots, ugly game. So I was thinking more people would be on the Houston Texans here, but maybe they're digging into what I, what I'm about to get to. They actually won the box score in that in that matchup against the Patriots, even though they lost the game. They were plus two yards per play. And it was actually the first time I got this from the gold sheet. First time in NFL history, a team scored 20 plus points, did not turn the ball over and held their opponent to under 250 yards and lost the game. First time in NFL history, those three things have happened. Well, the Jets checked the box on all three of them. And maybe most importantly here, guys, Aaron Rodgers prime time, you know, Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night football. He's the number three in NFL history in terms of passer rating. When it's prime time, he comes to play. I think all of that uh, is some of the reason the Jets are taking some money here. So minus one and a hook. Hey, let's jump on the Jets as the favorite over the Houston Texans, minus one and a half. So those are the two games here, college football and the NFL for Thursday night. In recap, Jets minus one and a half. Tulane, the green wave, minus 14 and a hook. That does it for Thursday, Drew's Daily Diamond. We'll be back on Friday, three-pack in college football. we got the Saturday and Sunday shows coming your way, so smash that like button, comment below, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Cash those tickets.